The sun broke the horizon in a spectacular display of crimson and gold, casting an ethereal glow over the Harrison plantation. It was Sunday, the day of rest and worship, yet this was not a typical Sunday. An undercurrent of tension rippled through the plantation, imperceptible to most, but keenly felt by one, Gary. He woke earlier than usual, his mind tangled with a whirlwind of thoughts, plans, and trepidation. His heart pounded in his chest, matching the rhythm of his dread. This was the day, the day he had decided would mark the beginning of his journey towards freedom. Walking towards the carriage house, he noted the peaceful, serene nature of the plantation in the early morning hours. The slaves were still asleep, blissfully unaware of the seismic shift that was about to take place in their world. He passed Amy in the kitchen. Her usual, cheerful greeting faltered as she noted his unusually stern expression. Something bothering you, Gary, she asked, concern evident in her soft eyes. Gary shrugged nonchalantly. Just a little tired, Amy. The Harrisons were a handful yesterday. She nodded sympathetically, turning back to the stove. But he could see the worry in her eyes. Guilt washed over him. Amy, who was more a sister than a fellow slave, deserved to know. Yet he couldn't tell her. The risk was too great. As Gary readied the carriage for the Harrisons' journey to the church, he was unusually quiet. Each stroke of the brush on the horse's coats, each check of the carriage wheels, each check of the carriage wheels, each small preparation was performed with a mechanical precision, his mind elsewhere. When Mr. Harrison stepped out, his eyes surveyed Gary with a calculating glance. You're quiet today, Gary, he commented, his voice devoid of warmth. Yes, Massa, Gary responded, forcing a smile onto his face. Just focusing on my work, sir. The carriage ride to the church was a tense one. Gary remained silent, his hands tight on the reins, his eyes focused on the road ahead, not just the dusty path to the church, but the road that lay ahead of him, a path leading to freedom, or so he hoped. Throughout the day, Gary maintained his composure. The tension coiled inside him remained his secret, a hidden turmoil beneath the calm surface. Even as he led the Harrisons back home and retreated to his quarters, the plantation remained oblivious of the storm brewing in its midst. As night fell, Gary lay awake in his bed, the soft snores of his fellow slaves the only sound in the still night. His heart was a thunderous drum in his chest, the weight of his impending departure heavy in his heart. But despite the fear, the tension, the unease, Gary was resolute. In the oppressive silence of his small quarters, the magnitude of Gary's decision weighed heavily on him. His mind echoed with the whispers of doubts and what, ifs, mingling with the steady rhythm of his heart. He was caught in a storm of his own making, torn between the desperate desire for freedom and the nagging guilt of abandoning those he considered family. He stared into the darkness, his thoughts punctuated by the soft snores of his fellow slaves. The bonds of their shared struggle were deep, their camaraderie born out of shared hardship and the common yearning for liberty. And it was these bonds that made his imminent departure so excruciatingly difficult. Was it selfish? This burning desire to be free, to break the shackles of slavery, and to taste liberty, did it make him a traitor to his kin? In the dead of the night, Gary found himself wrestling with these questions. He had no answers just an unsettling understanding of the consequences. His departure would, undoubtedly, bring a harsher reality for the others. His thoughts drifted to Amy, her soft eyes always filled with compassion, her spirit unbroken despite the cruelty of their circumstances. Would she understand his decision? He thought of John, the formidable field slave, his powerful frame bearing the brunt of the harsh field work. Would he resent him for leaving? He thought of Norris, Tricia, each face a reminder of the life he was about to leave behind. He allowed himself to feel the weight of his decision, the guilt and the uncertainty. And in the heart of that storm, a single powerful thought emerged, the hunger for freedom. It was not just a yearning. It was a primal need, 
a call from deep within that refused to be ignored. He realized that his choice was not born out of selfishness, but survival. With a heavy heart, Gary stood up from his meager cot, his body a silhouette in the faint moonlight that filtered through the cracks in the wooden walls. He walked over to the small window, his eyes drawn to the sprawling plantation bathed in an ethereal glow. He felt a bitter sweetness swelling in his heart. The plantation, despite its ruthless regime, had been his home. It was where he had laughed, cried, loved, and lost. His eyes lingered over the distant fields, the sight stirring memories of laborious days under the scorching sun. The big house, illuminated under the moonlight, brought back snippets of countless conversations, shared meals, and a sense of community. Silently, he said his goodbyes, his eyes burning with unshed tears, his heart heavy with the burden of his joys. His future was uncertain, fraught with peril. Yet the promise of freedom held a magnetism that was impossible to resist. And so, as the night deepened, Gary made his choice. The silent rebellion had begun. His heart echoed with a single resolve, freedom. And with this resolve etched in his heart, he prepared to step into the unknown, leaving behind the familiarity of bondage for the uncertain allure of liberty. The night before his departure was one of restlessness. Gary sat on the edge of his narrow bed, the usual hum of sleep muffled under the cloak of his own fear. A pungent smell of sweat and earth clung to the air of the shared sleeping quarters, a grim reminder of the relentless routine that awaited with the break of dawn. Turning over the plan in his mind, he couldn't help but feel the sharp prick of guilt. Every whisper of the wind seemed to carry an accusation, every creak of the floorboards a judgment. The shadows of his companions, stretched out across the room, were constant reminders of what he was leaving behind. It was fear that gnawed at him, more than the guilt. Fear of the unknown, fear of what lay beyond the confines of the plantation, beyond the stifling familiarity of bondage. Yet, it was this very fear that had sparked the ember of rebellion within him. Dirty Gary, he whispered to himself, a wry chuckle escaping his lips. His father's nickname for him, a light-hearted jest that had stuck around, seemed incongruously out of place now. He was no longer the mischievous boy who'd earned the nickname. He was a man on the precipice of rebellion, an impending fugitive in the pursuit of liberty. Pacing the length of his small quarters, he grappled with his trepidation. He thought about the dangers of the journey ahead, about the wanted posters that would soon bear his name, about the relentless slave catchers who would be on his trail. Yet each terrifying possibility only hardened his resolve. It's freedom or death, he said to himself, his voice a harsh whisper in the stillness of the night. He thought about the others, about the ripple effect his departure would cause. He knew his absence would bring harsher conditions, longer hours, and increased scrutiny for the remaining slaves. It was a bitter pill to swallow. He considered telling someone, leaving a note, or giving a hint, anything to ease the shock of his sudden disappearance. But he knew better. The less they knew, the safer they'd be. Gary paused in his pacing, glancing one last time at the forms of his sleeping companions. They were more than fellow slaves. They were his kin, his family. Their shared hardship and dreams of freedom had forged a bond stronger than blood. The thought of leaving them behind was a physical ache, a sharp pang that pierced through his determination. But he reminded himself of the stakes, the price he was paying, and the promise of freedom. Freedom, he repeated the word, as though tasting its sweetness. It was a heady thought, intoxicating in its allure. Gathering his meager belongings, he allowed himself one last glance at the sleeping forms around him. I'll come back for y'all. He whispered into the silence, a promise sealed in the solitude of the night. With a final surge of determination, Gary pushed away his fears, squared his shoulders, and stepped into the new day. A day that marked the dawn of his rebellion, the beginning of his pursuit of freedom.